Greetings, people of the world! Matthew back with you here in Overall Autism for the continuation of Let's Play Final Fantasy XIV on Realm Reborn. It is year 2, day 80, for EDSS in the Realm Reborn. And last time, we had the opportunity to say goodbye to Tataru as she began on a new journey to find herself, if you will. And so now that we've taken care of that, we can go ahead and speak with Lady Menphilia, and we will get our next challenge within the main storyline underway. Starting with a challenge entitled, Where We Are Needed. Ninfidia is eyeing you with a mixture of regret and desperation. I wonder, do you perchance recall the commitment I made to furnish Hoy Boulder with a capable adventurer? Well, I am sorry to say that I have as yet been unable to do so. Now, I realize that you are rather more than a capable adventurer, and that escort duty is frankly beneath a man of your talents. But I have no one else to turn to at present. Might you be willing to forego the rest and assist us in this matter? Of course. Generous to a fault. I thank you, Edie. Now, it seems only fair that I explain the import of the task in question. For some time, our order has employed a handful of scholars to travel around Eorzea taking etheric readings that we might better understand the impact of primal summonings. Naturally, it behooves us to ensure our employees' safety, and so we ask the adventurers in our service to serve as escorts. Hoy Boulder and Coltenay were to act as two such escorts, as was the third adventurer. Alas, due to entry, said adventurer is not presently fit for duty, hence my duty, hence my need to impose upon your goodwill. Of course there, Lady Mephilia. You truly are a pit of strength, Edie. Hoy Boulder will show with you the details of your task. He should be waiting for you outside. Be safe. Alright. And this we shall do. And so, away we go to meet with the big, burly, but very classy Hoy Boulder. And see what he... Ha, the details are. Ah, Hidi! Is it true that you agreed to lend us a hand? Yeah, that's right. Huzzah! What did I tell you, Colton? A eh? our misfortune has a become a blessing. An opportunity to serve alongside the warrior of light himself. Need I remind you that we have three scholars to escort, each of whom will take a different route? True, true, but our mission is the same. Separate, separated by moms as we may be. But in spirit, we shall be together. <laughs> if such thoughts bring you joy, you are welcome to thank them. Two more practical concerns, Edie. We would have you attend to this scholar charged with surveying this South Shroud. He is waiting at Camp Tranquil as we speak. All you need do is follow the man. He will determine the most appropriate action locations to take his readings. In spirit, Edie! In spirit, we shall be together every step of the way! And so away they go to protect their respective charges. And so now it's my turn to go and protect mine. So, Camp Tranquil it is. Heading on this awesome journey. Yeah, cause, yeah, it won't be much longer now, as I've said before, till we get to the end of this game. It shouldn't take more than a few more days to see this game through to its conclusion, so... Let's go over to this unsettled scholar and speak with him. At last, the silence man deigns to grace me with his presence. A pity that we have no time for pleasantries. Our first destination is Isom Ha. Come, we are late enough as it is. Alright. Then lead on, good sir. Nisam Har is situated to the north of here. So we head northward. So our the destination we're going to, it's actually, um, since this is also where Amberport Keep is, it's actually not in the same place where Amberport Keep is. It's actually down a different road. It, this place, Isam Har, is on a path all to itself. And we really haven't had an opportunity to discuss much of the landscape in this game. Um, we have been here on a couple of occasions before to do side quests at Isam Har. It's this huge, giant crevasse right here. And we actually helped out Rolande and Iriel back on year one with their assistance. So, let's go ahead and speak with the scholar. Yes, this location should suffice. Once I've finished calibrating my instruments, 
I will require but a moment to take the necessary measurements. I trust I need not explain that my work can suffer no interruptions? Then please, stand at an appropriate distance and keep watch for wild beasts. Alright. Well, turns out this is where we need to stand. So let's be on the lookout for anything suspicious. Like these fly traps! Let's dance! Let us dance and in turn destroy you! Okay, you can spit seeds at me, but it'll do you no good. Oh, there's a third! Alright. Well, it doesn't matter. Bring me an entire garden of fly traps. It matters not. For I shall defeat you all! I shall defeat you all! Break through ya! Now that's how you deal with weeds. I see we've both completed our respective tasks. A satisfactory outcome. Though if I can make one suggestion, you might try to dispatch your foes most more quietly in the future. I do not like to pick fault, but I really must be allowed to concentrate. Well, maybe if the enemies weren't so close to you? Now then, snake more to weights. Shall we? And this time where we have to go actually is in Port Keep, so actually will be faster to warp to Quarry Mill because that'll get us there quicker. Plus this provides us with a direct path to where we need to go. So quick warp over to where we need to be. And then southbound. Let's go ahead and say hello to the Lord of Waiters. Actually, before I, before I do that, since we are in Gridania, I want to do one last thing. This is something I never actually have shown off during the course of this game since I changed over to PS4, but I really wanted to make a point of it before I go. You remember when back on year one, day one, that we were first introduced to the Wood Wailers, and you know that they of course wear these creepy masks. Um, I don't know if I can actually get it from this vantage point, but I'll try and go in first party view. If you, know, if you can actually notice carefully here, you can see their masks actually are made of wood. You can actually see the wood grains, the wood rings, on their masks. And that's really amazing how they were able to do something like that. I think it might be a better way to um, show this perspective off if I stand in right, just the right spot. If I can stand in the right spot and get this guy to cooperate with me here, but I think he might just be um, sticking to himself. I think he's just going to stare me down, but... Yeah, I'll, I'll try and highlight this before we bring this to a close, so... Yeah, that's something I really wanted to show off, that in Final, in the PS4 version of Final Fantasy XIV A Realm Reborn, you can really see how meticulous um, the detail is because of the fact that you can actually see the wood grains on the masts of the wood whalers. That, that, that's just very impressive attention to detail. It's a, it's, it was a little out of the way and something that wasn't really necessary, but something that I first really noticed once I started playing this game on PS4 and I thought, I really need to bring this up. J just for the point of doing so. Just how, to show just how, um, finally the attention to detail is in the game. To go so far as to even put the wood grains, the wood rings, on the masks of the wood waders, that's really amazing. Alright, time to meet with our scholar again. Right about here, yes. As before, I would ask that you keep an eye out for dangerous beasts as I work. And this time, well, it's still a little too close, I'm sure, for the scholar's taste, but this is where we have to stand. And so, we the attack. This time it comes from a tree ant. Let's launch into the air and start laying waste of stuff. Yeah, we also got the attention of a deep void death mouse, so might as well dispose of him while we're at it. Now yeah, they're not feral, but because he was caught in the crossfire naturally, he was gonna to attack too. And so down you go. Now let's speak with the scholar again. Fascinating. These readings are not at all what I expected. Though perhaps this should come as no surprise, I am not given to superstition, but there is a queer, almost blasphemous air hereabouts. Let us quit this place and return to Roots Lake. 
We have one more site to survey. And specifically to get there... Um... Okay, yeah, it's faster to go to... Can't Tranquil, because that's closer. So yeah, Paul and Luminous have actually helped us out on Steps of Faith is here too. Doing the same challenges I'm doing, looking to bring things to a close. Alright, so, away we go again. And Settled Scholar now wants us to join him in the west. So let us meet him over at the lost city of Amdapur. It is, it is there where we shall take on the next challenge. And we'll come past all adamantoids and flying spirits. But we have found our person of interest. As before, my guardian, pray leave me to my task and ensure our safety. And so this time, we have to stand over here. And which means we're going to be caught in the crossfire more revenants. And it's a pain that, they're, that they could get caught in the crossfire, but we have a job to do, so we got to do it. Into the air. To the air. I'm going to finish you off quickly. Alright, you're dealt with. Now Dragonfire die. Uh, let's take you out. Okay, the two rates are down. But more spawn in the place. We use them to be exact. As long as we can just keep the attention on just one, we'll be fine. As long as we can keep the other two off our backs as much as possible, that'll definitely help us out. Now Malice, that, I think I've mentioned this before, but Malice, if you get caught in it, doesn't damage you, it actually instead will take away 200 technique points off of you. But we got those weights defeated. So let's go back over to the Unsettled Scholar. This data should prove invaluable to- Ye gods, what is that stench? Did you slaughter a creep of adamant horses while my back was turned? Oh, that actually isn't what we killed. Quickly now, off to Count Tranquil. I will not have my clothing reeking of blood and awful. <laughs> yes, sir. Anyway. We'll do this the expedited way. Back to Camp Tranquil via Aetherite Shard. And so, let's speak with our scholar. See if he's satisfied with what he found. Hmm. You chose to paddle in the i a while longer, I take it. No matter. I took advantage of my unexpected privacy and performed a cursory analysis of my data. It would appear that there has been a measurable decrease in Eorzea's ambient aether concentrations since the Calamity. However, this data is far from conclusive. We must take additional measurements to confirm my assessment. And so... We will help him with that, I guess, by taking on the next challenge entitled The Least Among Us. Who better to serve the signs of the Seventh Dawn than a humble scholar and his faithful assistant? For our next survey, I would have you escort me to Earth's Fount. The ambient aether concentrations there are so high that crystalline structures form spontaneously. Consequently, anomalous fluctuations should be much easier to detect. Brilliant, yes? Now don't bother answering, that was a talk -all. Now come along. So where Earth's Fount is, is actually closer to Quarry Mill. In fact, it's pretty much right on the gate of Quarry Mill is where it is. This place actually has a reputation for um, having to, to do a certain challenge that is not all that appealing. And to be honest, I believe this is optional. I do not believe that where we're going is a mandatory location or a mandatory challenge. Nonetheless, we have to go here anyway. So, once we get there, I'll be able to be certain whether or not this, um, where we go is actually a mandatory required challenge. So we have to walk through, or in this case, ride through this tunnel in order to get to Earth's Bounce. And as you can see, the enemies skyrocket from level 28 enemies to level 45 enemies. Now, these things do not mess around, especially the wild hogs. These things will just come at you if you get too close so do your best when you're doing challenges like this to just try and find a spot to avoid them altogether oh hey all right i'll take that thank you 
Hey, we want to go up. Yeah, because we need to try and avoid these flying insects, but yeah. <laughs> nothing ever comes that easy, does it? Oh, and then a second, and then his friend comes in and gives me the business. Hopefully we can get as far away as possible that they will break off their pursuit. One breaks off his pursuit, two breaks off, break off their pursuit. Okay, good. Let's go over here to the Unsettled Scholar. How did you get here without taking a hit? You should be more familiar with the procedure. You should be more than familiar with the procedure by now. Pray find a suitable position from which to keep watch while I take measurements. And so, he wants us to stand. If I can find it. Um, right over here on this little island. So he does his research on one island, I stand watching another. And before too long... Yeah, as we stay and watch... Yes, yes. Quite high, yet still markedly lower than the historical measurements taken near the end of the sixth astral era. Could the presence of a primal account for the difference? Or is there something else? Something else? Well, he's about to make a move. So we're obviously going to have to follow him. In case he gets into trouble. Something else. And then I think he finds it. Son! Son, come here! I need you! Yeah, horror music. Oh, whoa, what? Oh, it's a crystal grave. Specifically, well read. Um... Fear not, my friends! Hope has arrived! Yeah, I think we should have arrived, like, earlier, because we're about to find... Yeah, you two are about to find something you weren't expecting. Thank you all, Izzy! Hori and I were worried when you and your charge failed to return at the appointed hour. Um, the reason why we're not yet returned yet is what Harry Bold Hori Bold is going to investigate. A dead crystal brave. Gutted like a hog! But not by one... No! These wounds were made with a blade! Doesn't look like he put up much of a fight either! Nearly a mark on his sword or his shield! Yeah, and the scholars freaked out. I found nothing of any crystal brave operations in this area. What calls had we led to come here? Well, what should we do? Run? Unless more um, enemies come after us? We'll see to the scholars' protection, ED. Aye, and the boy's remains. You should return to the Rising Stones. The Antecedent will want to know what happened here. And so should Alpha Node. That's one of his soldiers gone. Oh, that's bad that we see a dead Crystal Braver before our very eyes. Yeah, as for what's going on over there, that we can just ignore. Because it doesn't concern us. Yeah, that's something that I think is actually... A different challenge that you can take, but it's not one that I'm going to dirty my hands with. Ugh. So, sorry it's for the fact that I'm stretching in between transitions, but uh, it's it's been a long day. It has been a long day. <laughs> uh, but yeah, we still have work to do. Because now we have to let Lady Menphilia know that bad stuff's been going down. So let's make our way over to Rising Stones again. And hopefully Alpha Node will be there so we can break the bad news to him. Yeah, Will Red, who we first met on, I believe it was day 41 of year one, because he was trying to lead a contingent of refugees from Little Al Amigo to try and gain some power that they didn't know what it entailed. And so since they were getting in over their heads, we had to actually save them from the Amalja. So let's speak with Lady Menphilia to complete this challenge. Edie, you are returned, and you seem troubled. Did the role of escort chafe so? Actually, what happened was... Wither dead? Mayhap murdered? By the Twelve, how can that be? I will send Roy to Alphanode at once. He'll want to conduct a full investigation and send word to Wilred's family. Gods, he was just a boy. 
Who would do this and why? Well, maybe we can find out on the next challenge, so... I believe what I will take will be... Well, since I don't really need any of these, I'll just take a Spirit Bomb Potion for the sake of it. Spirit Bomb Potions allow you to... Um, when you're trying to get Materia, what happens is that you need a piece of fully Spirit-bound gear in order to be able to convert it to, mater to Materia. I believe I mentioned this back in year one. Also, in addition to that, not all gear can be turned, turned into Materia, like the gear that Edie is currently wearing. It cannot be turned into Materia. But let's now move on because, yeah, with a dead Crystal Brave, who knows how many more could be following. Let's speak with Ma Lady Manfilia to take on the next challenge entitled, A Time to Every Purpose. While others look forward to the impending royal banquet, Manfilia cannot help but look to the past. And so... The recent events weigh heavily on our minds. We must need set them aside for now. We have come to a defining moment in Eorzean history. The grand commemoration of our joint defense of Ishgard, the first time in 15 long years that our people have stood side by side with our neighbors to the north to fight in common cause. There, this may mark the true rebirth of the Eorzean Alliance. Failing that, it should at the very least serve to bring our nations closer together. And so? We have every reason to raise our voices in celebration, do we not? I guess in your life you never had have, have had much cause for celebration. We have pissed the Juvanians and Arsenes both. Against desperate odds, we have fought and won. But the primals still plague us, and the Empire still plots our subjugation. And our triumphs, remarkable though they are, were bought at a terrible price. Brave adventurers and allies, broken on the steps of faith, and before our eyes in this very room, our dear friend Mumbreda. This is the victory we have, re we have wrought, and it is as bitter ashes in my mouth. I would sooner stay here and invite those with more appetite to enjoy the feast in my stead. You really feel that badly? You really don't want to go that bad? Alas, it is a royal banquet and all of our allies will be in attendance. It is our duty to present a united front that we might serve as a beacon of hope to all. Yeah, that's what we're here for, Lady Manfilia. Because we've got your back. It seems I have no choice but to take my own advice. And so, I instructed the others to meet us in Uldar that we might make our grand entrance together. Unfortunately, I had to settle for leaving Tataru and Lamin a note. If they do not return quickly, they will have to settle for whatever leftovers I can smuggle out of the Franklin Chamber. And so, away we go. And yeah, it's time for us to go be celebrating. Hopefully. Oh, hey, Riol. Off to this big swore Edie. Raise a glass for me, eh? Or not. You don't look best pleased, lad. Something on your mind? I don't know if you must know, you lost one of your own today. Yeah, that well red boy you were talking about? Oh, the Navigator Wolverine's dead! God damn it, they must have known they've been rumbled. I mean, uh, sod it. It is past time we had this talk. After our last conversation, I got to thinking about where certain funds were coming from, so I had to dig around on the quiet, like, and sure enough, I found it. Seems a fair bit of the coins made its way into the Braves' coffers, courtesy of a Dodo Consortium. A daft name for business if I ever heard one, which is what first gave me an inkling that something weren't right. So I went through the ledgers again and found another half dozen donations from organizations with stupid bloody names. Didn't take long to find the common thread. All were owned by the Mirage Trust. Yeah, that sounds like a name. Oh, I'll give the bastard credit. He showed us up for the amateurs we are. Shorter Colin won his businesses the bloody bribery consortium. I don't know what more he could have done to mock our rules on financial contributions. 
The gods only know how many men on the first and third were taken to Leji out of Leji's coin. But now we know that some of them are. And I wager my right eye they're the ones who did what did for Wilred. The earnest young fool had to ask, taken to asking the wrong kind of questions. Bound to attract attention he was. Should have seen her at the time, but I didn't, God damn me. Still, I don't see what Teleji hopes to accomplish. He hid his scheme with all the care of a drunk pissing into the wind. No, he's cleverer than this, so we need to be clever too. That's the only way we'll ever be able to repay this debt of blood. We'll purge every one of them traitorous bastards from our ranks. On that you have me word. Yeah, it looks like the Crystal Braves could be falling apart before, and just as they, they, after, they were, after they were getting off the ground too. And Edie, mind yourself when you all die. We're riding into a storm, I can smell it. The kind of what Superman overboard and drag him under for he knows it. Yeah, this does not sound good. At all. So, yeah, we got positives on one side, negatives on the other. I mean, it, it could be a disaster for all we know. We, we could be walking into something that we want to be enjoying, but if all goes wrong, then, well, I, I really don't know what to say. Because what happens if disaster strikes while we're celebrating? Anyway, we have to go to the Chamber of Rule to speak with Lady Manphilia. And we're gonna see what she has in mind for us. Well, we know what's on the mind, so since we're going to this party, of course, it should be only fair that I dress in dress uniform, naturally. And hey, everyone's here from the signs of the Seventh Dawn, except for Uriage, he's not. We have been waiting for you, Edie. The celebration is due to begin shortly. Yeah, I guess he has too much to do over back in Vesper Bay. I had hoped that we might make our introductions together, but Mistress Mamodi just sent word that you are needed at the quicksand. Why the quicksand? Well, why don't we find out by taking the next challenge entitled, Come, but not gone. A hero must go wherever he is headed, or needed, and according to Menphilia, you are needed elsewhere. I wonder why that is. We will go on ahead, Edie. Pray join us once matters at the quicksand are resolved. And so, away they go. Hey, Thancred, what's up? Give my regards to Mamodi, and let her know that I will call upon her anon. Yeah, you do your Brock thing there, Thancred. I don't like what- I don't like your- the way you're speaking there. Right. Yeah, it turns out we can't celebrate just yet. We got something else to take care of. So... Ethernet charred us right to the Adventurers Guild. Because of course, that's where the quicksand is, and that's where Miss Mamodi is. Alright, so. Things to take care of quickly, hopefully. So let's march our way into this place and see what Mamodi has in mind for us. I appreciate you dropping in on such short notice, CD. I know you've got places to be, so I won't waste your time. You're friends with a crystal brave by the name of Alian, aren't you? Former adventurer? Come to think of it, I'm pretty sure you recruited her yourself. That I did. Well, anyway, she came out for a meal not long ago, and before she left, she asked me to give you a message. Said if the others end up dragging you to the feast, I was to see you got it before you made your grand entrance. Meet me at the station west of the Coffer and Coffin. There's something I must show you. A short message, I'll grant you, but she thought long and hard before picking those words. Barely touched her food, too. Under other circumstances, I'd have thought of those signs of a troubled heart, but something tells me she ain't planning to confess her undying love. No, of course not. So yeah, we need to warp to Central Thanland. That means going to Blackbrush Station. Because that's where the Coffer and Coffin is closest to, as opposed to just warping out using an Aetherite Shard. Alright, we have to go west for this. And since you never know if an enemy might be looking about, we'll switch the battle gear for this. So, west we shall go. 
as the sun prepares to set on another day here in Oda. Let's go ahead and pass through this fate, because we don't need to do the fate. Alright, so, moving our way through, pass all the Kirin, and it is here where we have to come and make a stand. So, let's see if we can find Miss Alian. Hopefully she doesn't get lost in the desert. As you stand upon the platform, your thoughts begin to wander, and all too soon the ghosts of comrades lost and enemies slain begin to file by your mind's eye in solemn procession. Clearing your head, you scan the horizon, but see no sign of Alian. Well, we have to continue to wait for her. Yeah, the challenge requires us to do so. Straining your ears to listen, you hear the chatter of Kakirin and the bustling of Syrphids, but no approaching footfall. Sighing, you bow your head, only to notice the vial lying at your feet. Yeah, so we gotta pick up this clouded vial here. Idi, is that you? What brings you out this way? Yeah, a member of the Crystal Braves, Laurentius, who we actually exposed as a Wood Whaler traitor back in year one. Well, if you need to know, this is what I can tell you. Lieutenant Alion? Why, no, I haven't seen her about. Had she, had she come this way, I guarantee we would have crossed paths. I must have passed this spot a dozen times. We're to patrol the city's environs on account of the royal banquet. Captain's orders, you understand. Speaking of which, isn't it about to begin? You should be with the honor of the other honored guests, enjoying a well-deserved respite. Aye, pray return to old Aidy. If I chance to meet the lieutenant, I will tell her you are here. Yeah, let's hope she doesn't didn't meet the same fate as Wolred did. What's on your mind? No, talking on Link's shell. What's he discussing and with whom? Is it another member of the Crystal Braves? Because given the message we got from Riol, it could be someone else entirely. And thus, we come to pay visit to the Sultana. O oh, Sultan Tree, hallowed spirit of my line. Through my weakness, the glorious house of Ul has all but disappeared beneath the sands. For want of the strength to raise it up again, it were better that it fall. Yeah, she's been pondering this for a Forgive long time. Me, but I know not what else to do. She's been pondering and giving up her throne for a long time. And abdicating. But yeah, we now have to go back to Old Ah and present the vial to Momodi. So let's make our way there right now. The sun is setting on another day in Eorzea. But now we have to figure out what the vial was about. Hopefully, Momodi will have an answer. So, night has now fallen on Old Ah as the light of the sun starts to set away. So, let's go make our way back over to Momodi to complete this challenge. I reckon you'd head straight to the feast after meeting with Alian. What's the matter? No appetite? Actually, if you have to know... So she wasn't there, but this was, eh? Let's see! Hmm... Looks to me like an alchemist's vial, but beyond that I can't say. Might be best if you hold on to it for safekeeping, though. So we can present it to the Crystal Braves if things go wrong? Any road, no use worrying about Alian. I'm sure she'll turn up before too long, and when she does, we'll soon find out what was in this... what this was all in aid of. Besides, you've got more important things to think about. Yes, indeed we do. So, we're actually going to speak with Momodi right now before we bring the day to a close to take on the next challenge entitled The Parting Glass. Judging by Momodi's grin, your star could not rise any higher. 
Would you believe that while you were away, another message arrived for you? Well, one did. One delivered by the Sultana's handmaiden, no less. Seems to increase the desires of private audience. Her handmaiden will meet you on the royal promenade and escort you to the Sultana's chambers. So what are you waiting for? Go on then, go! Alright. I mean, we can do that. But, cutscene first. Uh, well, Sultana? You needn't trouble yourself, so. Your grace is most kind, but it is no trouble to me, rather an honor. If your grace is ready, I shall summon the warrior of light. I am. Okay. Well, since we know she's going to be waiting for us, now yeah, the signs of the seventh on arrive at the banquet. And hey, Minfilia actually has a rare smile on her face. Doesn't happen often. As we can see, there are a lot of people from Ulda here. You can tell by the turbans and their fancy robes. But yeah, take a load off. You earned it. And we even have the leaders of the Eorzean Alliance along with Sir Emmerich and Lucia. And hey, even Alpha Note Everyone is here. Everyone looks to be in high spirits. With good cause. A common victory may serve to unite even the most unlikely of allies. You've brought us one step closer to a united Eorzea. Mission accomplished, your huh? Your modesty knows no bounds, Antecedent. Were it not for your efforts, Sir Emmerich would never have become such a steadfast ally. Or your efforts, there, Alpha Node. When he convinces his countrymen to rejoin the Alliance, we shall all reap the benefits, military and economic. I tell you, we are on the cusp of a new era of unity and prosperity. Territorial disputes are all that divide us now. But I have faith that we will find an amicable solution in time. And failing that, I'll have my trusty warrior of light box the ears of all concerned. Wow, really there, Alpha Note? Speaking of whom? He will be joining us shortly. A matter at the quicksand required his attention, but it did not sound serious. Yeah, well, let's hope for your sake that it actually was true. But yeah, we have a party to attend, so we better get on it. And so, let us make our way back out over towards the Chamber of Rule. And we'll go ahead and warp our way there. Yeah, the person who was standing behind me, or in this case beside me, was a brand new character to the game. And I went to the wrong place. <laughs> Yeah, just like me to want to get to a banquet so badly that I end up going the wrong way. <laughs> but yeah, since we're going to be speaking with someone who is the head of state, obviously, for someone like me, and of course, I've never been able to help it throughout the entire course of this Let's Play, dress uniform is in earnest. So, there is the lady in waiting that we need to speak to. So... We will go ahead and speak to her next time because we have now done it. We have now made our way to the end scene of this game. And so, next time, we will finally reach the long-awaited finale of this game. So, with that, I'd like to thank everyone for watching the continuation of Let's Play, F Play Final Fantasy XIV, A Realm Reborn. And when I join you again, we will speak with the Lady in Waiting enter the chambers for the banquet, and hopefully, when all is said and done, Eorzea will be ever that much closer to unification with Ishgard. So, until next time everyone, this is Matthew at Novora Autism, saying take care, and I'll see you soon.